welcome back to The Card Pool. I'm your host, Stu. And I'm Kyle. And today we are looking at the beautiful set of Torment, which Kyle was so nice to pick out for us. Well, thank you very much, Stu. This is, of course, part one of our Hidden Gems segment. We're looking at numbers 10 through 6 on our countdown, and these are the cards that are outside of the top 10 money cards in the set, which we'll be talking about in a later video. And just a reminder, we are not allowed to pick any of the cards that are in the top 10 money. And we'd also like to give a quick shout out to somebody who reached out to us on Reddit, just so you know we appreciate what you guys think. Mammoth Mulberry573, thank you very much. We really appreciate that message. Yeah, really, really positive message. Great to hear from our fans and people in the community. We have fans, isn't that cool? Yeah, I thought yeah. for sure it was just our parents. Yeah, probably, it probably is at least a little bit, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on with today's review here. Stu, what do you got for us? All right, so looking at my number 10 slot, we're looking at a card called Pitchstone Wall. Now this is a three drop creature with a 2-5 body. Now it is a wall creature. Now again, before back in the day, they had wall as a creature type because it was how they made it so, they made it so that people knew these can't attack. Later that ended up changing down the line. Kyle can tell us a better answer about all that stuff. But what this card says is whenever you discard a card from your hand, you may sacrifice this creature. And if you do, return the discarded card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is a very kind of rare effect, especially for in red, because yeah. red is the color of discarding and wheels and madness and everything else like that. So it's kind of interesting as this being some sort of way to save a card that you would not want to lose. So this is good for little combo pieces that you might try to go ahead and use on your own stuff or to help protect you from stuff that your opponent is doing. Yeah, kind of what you were saying before. Um, Defender is now a keyword ability that says this creature can't attack. Originally, walls were printed as a creature type just to show, as it kind of says on this card, that it could not attack. But then later on, when they printed creatures that they didn't want to be able to attack to have that Defender ability that Change weren't walls, lanes. you kind of changed a little bit, as many things do. So, Stu, I'm going to surprise everybody right now by saying, spoiler alert, this entire list... I couldn't find one single thing that I actually, within the context of the set, found fault with. That's very impressive. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. and, and, and coming from you, that is a big step. It's, it's, it is a huge step. Because you were very critical. Critical? Of your all right, all right. I mean, you could have used a not nicer word. So, but yeah, okay, that's good. All right. Anyway, um, this, so no, I actually do kind of like this card. Obviously, nowadays we have uh, more all encompassing options like conspiracy theorist or the new containment construct from Kamigawa where every single card you discard goes into exile and you can potentially cast and save it. This is interesting though because it doesn't go into exile of course it goes straight back to your hand and like you said such an early version of this effect is really interesting because if you're in a deck that likes to discard cards a lot I mean sometimes you might need it to protect against someone else's ability I see that happening pretty rarely but if you're in a deck that does like to discard cards a lot and you want one that you just really want to get back you had to lose it for some card effect or other hey this is a pretty good option honestly and two five for three mana it's not all that bad yeah it's a pretty decent wall and it can slot into a lot of walled decks i mean there are better options out there to try to go so you to make it so you can save cards in your hand, like Library of Lang, for a mm. great example. And we even got a land later, I forget what it's called, um, but it was one of the Innistrad sets where it's like, if you were to discard a card, you can go ahead and just... Yeah, Nathalia much... Academy. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one. But for this one being a creature, I can't really say that I've seen this before. This is reanimatable, mm. this is recurrable, you can do little combo tricks with this to go ahead and get this back in the field, because it is its own self-sack outlet, provided that you yeah. have a appropriate target, target. Discard, yeah so but again that's it's just so interesting i can't say i've ever really seen a card like this and i had to take note no it is really interesting yeah good good old uh find there Stu. appreciate it what uh, do you got for us Kyle? So, oh yeah i was just about to say so for my number 10 we're gonna go with something well, maybe a tiny little bit more mainstream cephalid illusionist now this is a 1-1 cephalid wizard i'm so excited by the way cephalids are coming back in uh, new capenna very excited for that um but it is two mana uh, whenever Cephalid Illusionist becomes the target of a spell or ability, put the top three cards of your deck into your graveyard. We know that as milling. Uh, also, it has the ability to tap three and itself. This turn, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to and dealt by target creature you control. So obviously, this card sort of starts comboing with itself at least a little bit oh, because sure. it can prevent damage that will be dealt to or dealt by itself, making you then mill three cards. 
the, pr the purpose of this card is self-mill, obviously, and yeah. self-mill is very powerful in a lot of different decks. Especially I mean, in blue. Yeah, and we see it in a lot of, we see it in a lot of the, uh, different ones today. Like, Sidisi is always the one that I go to for, like, That's your milling, favorite. making zombies is one of my favorites. But the reason why this is really, really good, especially for an uncommon, is because this is almost, it can form two card infinite combos with a huge number of different cards. Like? Think of anything that has a zero costing activated ability that targets, like, oh, I don't know, Lightning Greaves. Sure. Yeah. As this long as you have two that, creatures on the field, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, you do need another creature for that to work, but you can infinitely bounce this back and forth between two creatures and just mill yourself out. Hopefully, like a Laboratory Maniac. I was going to say, why would you want to mill yourself out? Then you can use Thassa's Oracle or a Laboratory Maniac or the Jace Planeswalker or like any number of the like zillion cards now that you win if you have no cards in your deck. Well, I was just going to say, this is good just value on itself because this doesn't say an outside targeted effect. This can target itself with its own ability. Sure can. So, all right, go ahead. You declare this as a blocker while it's still being declared as a blocker. Tap three, go ahead, target this to make sure any damage that's dealt to this mm -hmm. is nullified. So it's kind of really good as a chump blocker, provided the creature doesn't have trample, or yeah, pretty much as long as the creature doesn't have trample. Yeah. And see, moral of the story is I got to rebuild that CDC deck because it had like 15 different dumb ways to combo, and I needed a 16th. So there you go. Yeah, that's the magic <laughs> number. It's not three. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, great card. Definitely low cost with the value. It slots definitely easily into wizards, and there is a blue wizard who is all about milling the newer guy that came from Jumpstart. Well, it was Bruvac. He's more about milling other people, but still, there are a lot of wizards that do use that kind of self mill. Sure, theme sure. As well. But yeah, if you want to try to go ahead and slot that into another. Other spot. Yeah. Cephalid, little rarer of a creature type. Oh, definitely. But like I said, they're coming back in New Capenna. Very much looking forward to it. Now, the four color creatures that we saw forever ago in Ravnica, those weren't mm. Cephalids. Those no, were they were they were uh, Nephilim. 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 Okay. Yeah, which is a whole other thing. But let's yeah, uh, we'll just yeah. change the end to a C. And we'll add it as the same creature type. Uh, let's so many on. people are twitching. Yeah, what's your I next one, Stu? All right, at number nine, a card I'm looking at is also blue, called Hydromorph Guardian. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a three-drop creature with a two-two body. It costs two generic and a blue to cast. And its creature type is Guardian. However, it has an oracle of also being an elemental. And it has on it the effect of, for one blue, you sacrifice this creature, and then you counter target spell that targets one or more creatures you control. Mm. So this is really good. We've seen a whole bunch of other creatures that have built-in sac effects as like being able to counter spells, alter targets, adjusting triggers, everything else like that. So this is another good card for in that slot. But the reason this stuck out to me is for the fact that it is an elemental. Mm -hmm. Elementals are a huge tribe and they are very toolboxy with what they can do. And having this in their arsenal is great. If you have, I don't know, Horde of Notions, you can mm -hmm. go ahead and re bring out your command, uh, bring out creatures and reanimate them over and over again. Why wouldn't you want this to go ahead and save your commander from possibly dying? Yeah, I don't think you use it in that deck anymore, but you used to, I remember. It was pretty useful, really. And again, this is something that I can't really find fault with. I mean, targeting one or more creatures you control can be kind of narrow, but still, there are a lot of things that target creatures. So obviously, this has a lot of different uses, and the fact that it is a really powerful and relevant creature type, like Elemental, yeah. makes it potentially even better. So this is something that obviously I think there are just strictly speaking better options out there, but for a tribe, tribe yeah. I don't know. It's pretty good, honestly. Well, but that's the thing that I'm trying to point on here. Like, let's say this was a zombie, for example, yeah. how much higher would that be as an awesome card? Yeah. So like the tribe can be relevant as long as it has strong reanimative abilities. The one mm. thing I really do wish this had though is ability. Like this has to solely mm. be a spell. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, it still works for a lot. Your sort of plowshares, anything that has some sort of crazy evoke cost, like even the new elementals, for example, this could stop its own tribe. Yeah, or things that target like all the creatures in play, which there are some silly ways to do that now. But yeah, yeah, especially with the new commander we saw. From Kamigawa, yeah. Pinata, yeah. just like copy everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But <laughs> being able to go ahead and stop this for the low, low cost of one mana is very nice. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm, I just wanted to bring it out there if nobody knew it, and it's OG to this set. So, mm -hmm. Rock it if you get the chance. Speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and go on to my number nine, and we're sticking with the blue theme here, apparently. It kills me a little on the uh, inside. Yeah, I know. But number nine, Circular Logic for me. It is a three mana instant. 
Counter target spell unless its controller pays one generic for each card in your graveyard. Also, it has Madness, which Madness first came around in this set. It's an ability, and it's been a little bit reworded, that for the Madness cost, in this case one blue, if you were to discard this card, you can pay that Madness cost to discard it into exile, and then you can play it for just that madness cost. So what was the new variant of it? No, that is the new, that oh, was the new variant. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right now, on this card it says, you can play this card for its madness cost at the time you discard it from your hand. But they, they reworded it to include Exile, so it plays nicely with Prosper oh, okay. and some of the newer cards that I get what you're saying Exile. Now. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. I thought you were like, they made two versions of it? I was like, I don't yeah. think no, they No, they have. just reworded okay. how it worked a little bit. But anyway, the reason that I picked this card is not because it's like an amazing version of a counterspell. It's okay, because you know, it's, its power depends specifically on how many cards are in your graveyard. Sure. Number one, the Madness ability always makes things worth thinking about a little more because the Madness costs are so discounted on things. This could potentially just be a one-mana counterspell, which is amazing. Sure. So, like we were saying with the Cephalid Illusionist, the self mill, this gets more powerful for every card in your graveyard. So a lot of blue decks that are self milling or that are in any way, you know, discarding cards, this just gets more and more powerful the more of that you can do. So assuming you have even like five or more cards in your graveyard, I'd say this basically is a counter spell for one mana. Oh, definitely. And yeah, the madness is the part that makes this shine. Like sure, if you were looking at your three drop counter spells, this might fall a little short. Like a cancel yeah. versus this, I'd rather a cancel more of course. often. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's good to note if you are using that type of deck archetype. Sure. Yeah. Uh, no problems with it on my side, except for that it's blue and it's a counter spell, and <laughs> you don't really need a lot more of those in the game. So that's uh, that's yeah. my only gripe. <laughs> but uh, moving on to my card, if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. At my number eight, we're finally turning to the color pie of white, mm. and this is a card called Cleansing Meditation. Now this is a three drop sorcery, one generic, and double white and it reads destroy all enchantments. However, if you have Threshold online, and I'll talk about that in one second, instead destroy all enchantments, then return to play all the cards in your graveyard destroyed this way. Mm -hmm. And so what Threshold is, is as long as you have seven or more cards in your graveyard at time of cast, then you will be able to go ahead and have this secondary effect online. Notably, not native to this set. is This is part of the Odyssey block, Odyssey Torment and Judgment. It first came around in Odyssey. This card? No, the, the threshold mechanic, oh, I mean. Oh, you're making me nervous. I'm picking no. the wrong card <laughs> no. here. Yeah, so um, why is this so good? Obviously, being able to destroy enchantments is great. There's not a lot of enchantment hate out there, but if you're in white and green, there should be plentiful of that. So why is this so good? The threshold ability is what really makes this shine, and the reason being is once we started seeing Enchantress decks move outside of just green and white into the constellations and the there's, gods see, There's and some red, shrines. there's some black, there's a, even a little blue sometimes. So as long as you're splashing a little white in these decks, this is going to re-trigger your ETBs for yeah. all those decks and get them to go on multiple stacks. So one constellation trigger could go off three or four times, and let's say you have two cards with constellation out, Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, exactly. There are so many to name, like enchantments that you know have abilities when they enter the battlefield, or other enchantments enter the battlefield. There's there's more and more of them all the time. So the idea of yeah, like you were saying, being able to get rid of everyone else's problem enchantments and then bring all of yours back again it's and potentially so nice. yeah, so it's one sided and potentially reusing all that stuff. Hey, I like it. And that's pretty cool. And it's almost like looking at it like a blink card. Because yeah. literally, that's what you're kind of getting out of this. It's like, hey, or, I mean, technically ba bad phasing, we'll call it. It's, it, it's <laughs> technically bit, they're maybe. leaving and yeah. then coming right back. Like, this kind of interaction with enchantments, we would want to see this on a commander, actually. Like, yeah, how hey, powerful would, really would like this that. be for just some random sorcery out there thrown in? Yeah. Like. This is something I would love to see built around a little bit more. It'd be terrifying, but it would be really cool to see wizards like hanker down on something like this. Yeah, mass enchantment destruction too might be a little bit narrow, but hey, if you have a deck that have a lot of enchantments, maybe you do want to consider this. Or even a do we don't have technically a commander with threshold, do we? No, no, not really. Or at least one that we well, if we do have one out there and we don't even realize it right now, please let us know if that exists, because Honestly, I would love to see a deck like that. That'd be so cool. Yeah, I don't think we really have a threshold lord of any kind, but yeah, there are a lot of commanders that use graveyards now. That, yeah, yeah, technically it's yeah. almost the same thing. But either way, I digress. We'll move on to your card, Kyle. All right, so my number eight here is going to be, again, another white card here. It's called Equal Treatment. This okay. is a two mana instant. 
If any source would deal one or more damage to a creature or a player this turn, it deals two damage to that creature or player instead, and of course, draw a card. I, of course, you know that I picked this just for two mana draw a card in white. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not the only reason I picked <laughs> I mean, that's, You believed it for a second, I was though. like, well, it's that's not bad, <laughs> but if it's mono white, sure. But I was thinking more or less something like a Winata deck or yeah, no, something it's like just, that. No, it's I just great. picked it because it's really just kind of interesting. Like, you don't see... Uh, back in the old days, right, white used to get to play a lot with you damage. You gotta say it the right way. Like, like, oh... Back in the old yeah, days. Yeah, right. Back in the old days. No, you yeah. still didn't do it right. Back you gotta, in the old back days. Back in the old days. All right. But white used to be able to play around a lot with damage. Like, it would do damage to attacking or blocking creatures. There were actually some cards that would, act, like, ping things in white. You don't really see that a lot anymore. There's, uh, oh, here Witch and Hunter. there. Witch Hunter. Here, like yeah, well, that's school. what I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. Here and there, you see it a little bit. Um, but you don't really see white being able to play around with damage that much anymore other than preventing it, which even that has not been yeah, actually seen a in a little recent. while. But this, it, the, one of the only white cards I remember seeing that allows you to multiply damage. Like, what? You know? Because if, if, if you think about it that way, obviously it's reducing a large amount of damage to just two, but it could also up one damage to two, so I don't know why or how that would really be useful. I don't have any huge well, uh, so, game-breaking ideas there, but still. Well, this is, all right, so this is where it shines to me because this is the one thing you always kind of forget, and, and I'm saying this very mm -hmm. nicely, is you can use this defensively. So, for yeah. example, if a Blight Steal's coming and it would be mm -hmm. more than two damage, yeah. it is down to one damage. Well, two in this case. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. two damage. My mistake, so mm -hmm. the wording. So this is almost like a Bizarre Fog or yeah. a potential damage booster, which right. is the interesting part. Yeah, so it could be both. That's kind of why I liked it. Well, you didn't yeah. realize the other part, don't lie. No, but I, but that's didn't. the thing, Like, it is a great way to go ahead and save you from getting a whole bunch of damage or another yeah. player, and that's what I like about it. The drawing the card is extra sweetness <laughs> on this, honestly, because you, you technically don't need that. Like We've seen a lot of no, other white yeah. cards where it's just like, prevent three damage, yeah. and that's it. And yeah, it's and like, just really lousy. Yeah, and it's... And, Sometimes it's almost sorcery speed you yeah. see them on too. They're really weird. They're really weird cards. But like this one, I would say is probably the best of the bunch. Yeah, it's just interesting. Like I said, the whole reason I picked it was it can be a damage reducer or a damage multiplier in white, which is just really I would, weird. I wouldn't say multiplier because it's not multiplying, but it, it, again, it is a booster. But yeah, but whatever, it's all good. This is very, very odd. Very interesting card, I thought. Well, I have one of these in blue, actually, so okay, I'm pretty excited about it. So at my number seven, if it's cool you, yeah. is a card called Breakthrough. Now, this is a sorcery that costs X and one blue. And it reads, draw four cards and then choose X cards in your hand and discard the rest of it. Hmm. So this is bizarre because usually blue can draw cards and it's usually like one card for one card or based off the mana going up higher, you yeah. can, it can scale pretty nicely. Hmm. But this is super low costed for you to go ahead and get a lot of cards, yeah. cherry pick, and then dump what you don't need. I mean, you could it's its potentially one mana draw four, but then you'd have to discard your entire hand, so. But that's not always a bad thing. Depending on what commander you're using mm. right there, you go ahead, like, like again, Sidisi's out on the field or any other commander that wants to have stuff in the graveyard, mm. and it's like, all right, I have a handful of junk, or I have a way that's gonna go ahead and combo out with this. Like, I'll draw whatever, I'll do mm. something like this, put mana in. But this scales with the game. Usually these little, like, small cards, like a Pond or a Predame, those are great cards, don't get me wrong. But sometimes you are, end up just trying to, like, dig to dig to dig to yeah. get an answer, and it's just too small of a reach. This can reach big yeah. and can be used early or late. And... I, I, I think it's incredible. Yeah. Well, and, and how and how great would this be with one of my favorite cards, like Living Death, for example? Like, you got one of those, you have a bunch of big creatures in your hand. Sure, I'll pay, like, two for this, draw four more cards, and then just discard everything but the Living Death, and then play, yeah. hey, you know, that seems pretty good. Like, And that's just one of the things that this can do. So, how much mana would you need to actually, like, break even with this? Uh, like, four, and then... So, you technically need well, to spend, like, five on this to actually, like, break even and keep four cards. Well, remember, you're casting so. this, so this is going to lower your hand count by one. And it also depends on how big your hand is at the time. So, like, if you use a Reliquary Tower, you wouldn't want to yeah. play this at this point. No. But mm -hmm. if you have, like, let's say three cards in your hand, this is one of them, mm -hmm. you have two other cards. Like, so at that point, the game has already progressed. You've used a little bit of mana and everything else like that. 
Yeah. This, nice. I mean, it, it's different. It, it, yeah. The value of this card is definitely going to yeah. sway as it goes on. But how many times have you seen a player go ahead, they play Soul Ring, they have a land, and then usually the Soul Ring doesn't yeah. do anything, or they have like a medallion out there or a monument, and it's like the yeah, cost just, reduction doesn't really make a difference for like four or five yeah, turns. Yeah, we're just mana rocks that empty, play a lot of mana rocks that empty your hand, and then you have nothing. So wouldn't it be nice to then have this, and you can just redraw almost an entire hand with all that mana? Yeah, it was pretty cool yeah, to me. It just seems so different. Like I was building an Octavia deck, which is awesome. Mm. Uh, and if you want to check it out, we have uh, our tapped out mm. deck list below. Yeah. Uh, you can find mine there. And I was like, how good would this be for Octavia? Fill yeah. up the grave, low costed, draw cards if you need to. It's just... Wild. Yeah, I like it. Pretty cool. But moving on to your seven, Kyle, what do you got? All right, so number seven for me, we're going into black now, which, uh, spoiler alert, Torment was actually heavily skewed toward black cards deliberately from a design standpoint. This is the first one we're talking about here. It's called Last Laugh. This is an enchantment that costs four mana. Whenever a permanent other than Last Laugh is put into a graveyard from play, Last Laugh deals one damage to each creature and each player. When there are no creatures in play, sacrifice Last Laugh. This is almost like a Pestilence. It is like a Pestilence, except possibly even better because you don't have to spend any mana on it. Yeah, that's right. That's interesting. So, and, and notice it says whenever any permanent other than this card. So not just creatures, like a Pestilence cares about creatures in play and they're like you killing them off sure. and doing damage to them. Lands, but, artifacts. Yeah, fetch lands. Artifacts or enchantments or whatever that like sacrifices themselves, Planes creatures that sacrifice themselves. Yeah, exactly. So there are a lot of things that you can do with this. And then remember, for every one that goes away, it does one damage to every creature and every player. So then it could potentially kill off a lot of creatures too. The, the big thing yeah. about this actually is with treasure tokens coming into mm -hmm. play now, like really big clues, treasures. Yeah, all there you go. That's a great foods. way to use this. Yeah, this is a great way to halt that. So if you have a play group mm. that's all about those all of a sudden, or like Dockside Extortionist, he's yeah. in like almost every red deck. This is almost a counter to that. It's like if they try to use those to pull the pin, they're going to board like. Oh. See, I was thinking you would want to use them for yourself. Who cares about you taking damage? You kill everything else. Well, right, but that's the thing. You kind of give your opponents the potential to pull the pin. See what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, well, it is a little bit dangerous in that respect, depending on who you're playing, I suppose. Yeah, yeah but I, do, yeah, I like this card a lot. It's very interesting. Mm. It is balanced for the fact that it can lose itself, but again, black can recur enchantments now, yeah. which well, also, is... Yeah, and also, hilariously, pair this with an indestructible creature for great results. Oh, so. Stuffy Doll. Yeah, exactly. Stuffy Doll, right? I love that this. That would be, yeah, that would be so great. I mean, like, there's just a lot of cards people love, like, oh, Stuffy Doll this, Stuffy Doll that. Mm. I think, honestly, this might take the Stuffy all cake yeah I, I don't know it might but it's one of the better ones for I, sure yeah if you're in black i <laughs> honestly am very impressed with that i gotta i gotta totally give that like one of these oh, well. you're welcome. yeah i'm very impressed and also because i love humor so it works <laughs> out very well now moving on to my sixth card and the last card for this segment it is called Far Wanderings. Now this is a three drop sorcery. It is two generic and a green. And it reads, search your library for a basic land card and put that into play tapped, then shuffle your library. But not just that, it also has thresholds. Instead, search your library for three basic lands and put them into play tapped, then shuffle your library. Now, I'm a green player. I'm a green player at heart. I first fell in love with that color because Kyle was blue, so of course I had to choose the better color. Now. <laughs> I'm very particular when it comes to my land tutoring because like we have a whole bunch of cards that are really good at getting cards into play so this way green can get that advantage that it needs to ramp big and hit hard. Mm -hmm. This is a card that's really good for what it does. Again, granted that the threshold is on because for three mana you're like, well we have Cultivate, we have Kodama's Reach. Those are like the pinnacle of what we kind of look at for getting lands yeah. into play and tutoring. Getting one land for three mana is not all that great. It isn't. However, the closest thing we have to this is like Anissa's Pilgrimage, which mm -hmm. is strictly for forests. Being able to go ahead and get any basic lands is pretty much the selling part of this. Yeah. And being able to also get them into, like, again, it, 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 I, I love this for into so many play. reasons. Because, yeah, I'm not yeah. even talking words. You, you take take it for a second. I gotta regain yeah, myself. Well, three of the, yeah, well, it's having, having three lands come into play tap for three mana, and the threshold having seven cards in your graveyard is really not that big of an ask, no. even for a lot of green decks, because you're playing a lot of instant and sorcery ramp spells. This can actually add up really quickly, and if you just add in some creatures like Sakura Tribe Elder that maybe sacrifice Wayfarers themselves, 
solve ramp. a little bit. Yeah, it's Expedition a really map. yeah. There's really no. There's really not a huge jump to this actually being really good. And for your information, I was a green player way back in the day until I realized blue was the better color. But no green player my would say point, that. Yeah, no green my, player would ever my say point that. being. This was actually one of the very first cards in Magic that I owned, and I played the heck out of this back in the day because I saw it and I was like, ooh, three lands for three mana, this seems really good. And sure, it didn't always go that way, but for a common, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. It really is. And also, again, based off of your deck's archetype, so if you have anything that cares about Dredge, or if you have a Car Carador deck, or mm -hmm. anything else that's going ahead and filling the grave and taking mm -hmm. the advantage of it, like, this is something that is so good. You have, like, Sagarda, which is the one that creates the human token, so likes having stuff from the grave. And again, anything that's going to be using a life in the loom, Golgari Grave Troll yeah, in it as exactly. well. These are phenomenal cards in there because there usually is no minus. Yeah. Like three mana for three basic lands, that's better than three mana for drawing three cards. Yeah, it really is. That's most of the time. It, it really honestly, is. this is yeah. This could be a higher mana cost potentially. It might be not as good, but for a stinking common. Yeah, it's it's great. I really like this yeah, card. Yeah, that's just gonna go. That's money in the bank right there yeah. for you to save on your expensive tutors. So good job. Thank. Yeah, no, <laughs> I know. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it. You never really liked these cards. Uh, see, it is first time for everything. Yep. So last last one for me, number six here. We have Turbulent Dream. Of course, it's a going blue card. back to a blue card. Of course, yes. So this is a two mana sorcery, double blue too. Uh, as an additional cost to cast Turbulent Dreams, discard X cards from your hand, then return X target non-land permanents to their owner's hands. So, mm. this is a variation. There are a number of Dreams cards yeah. in this set. There, there is a rare cycle, and there's like an uncommon cycle of them, too. This is one of the rares. The best one in the cycle we'll be talking about later in the money cards, yes. I believe. Yes. But this, uh, I was looking through all of them, and this, I believe, is the second best card of the cycle. All right, I'll only agree to that because I don't know all of them off the top of my well, head. Well, there were a lot of them. I, I'll spare you the details right now, but maybe you can look at them later and tell me if I'm wrong. But this one, I believe, is the second best in the cycle compared to that other one that shall remain nameless for the time being. Voldemort. Because, uh, yeah, well, like you've, like you've been saying, this whole set is themed around, like, threshold and madness and discarding and building up your graveyard. So the discarding any number of cards from your hand makes it is a little bit steep of a cost sometimes, but this really does help out with any of those kind of decks that want to get cards out of your hand and into the graveyard. And the fact that it's only two mana and targets non-land permanents, not just creatures, is what kind of what puts this over the top to me. Yeah, well the thing that sets it over the top for me, again, not that it's the second best, but the fact that there is no X cost in this card. Mm -hmm. Usually we see that in almost every card that has this. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the card I mentioned before, Breakthrough. Right. Like there has to be some reason of why you're discarding these many cards or something else like that. So this is interesting because this goes really well if you have something that's like a windfall. You all of a sudden have a whole yeah. bunch of cards in your hand, but you're not exactly the answers you need. This can be that answer. Or if you, again, are a blue player, drawing cards like crazy, you're gonna have a Reliquary Tower out there or some thought vessel out there as well. Yeah. So this way you can save the amount of cards that you are netting. This is very powerful. This is really strong in what it does. However, the fact that it doesn't hit, doesn't hit lands, I like. But mm. that does make it a little yeah. weak to like landfall decks and stuff like that because if their mana is online, you're not really going to disrupt the field enough to make it so it stays away. Like, it, it could be a pseudo-cyclonic rift. It can, but, yeah, like, the, the main thing being, like, blue has difficulty dealing with things that are really not creatures. Sure. So, it, getting, being able to get rid of people's problematic, like, artifacts and enchantments is actually a really big deal. And even Planeswalkers now, too. Well, so. the, blue has a lot of stuff to return permanence. Like, that does exist. But I think blue's pretty much, they're like, I'm going to counter it. And whatever seeps through, that ends up being the it ends issue. up being a problem. That, yeah, yeah, and exactly. so being able to use this to kind of handle that is really nice. Yeah, but so just for two mana and the ability to discard any cards that you want from your hand and however many you want, I think that's pretty good, honestly. I, it is. I. Again, I can't condone it being second place. Maybe mm. our viewers out there can go ahead and tell us whether or not it is. 
worthy of second place. Mm. Kyle's usually wrong with most of the things uh, he says. Yeah, all right. So, you know, it will give him, you know, the chance to defend himself <laughs> online. But that is going to conclude our last card for our part one segment. Our part two segment is going to conclude the last of this list, being five through one with the tippy top of the cards that we absolutely had to talk about. Yes, indeed. And if you want more of our content, we know you think it's awesome. Thank you very much for telling us. <laughs> yes. uh, so you can find us on Reddit. Of course, you can find us on all our deck lists on Tapped Out. We're on Facebook and Twitter as well, and we're all at the handle The Card Pool. So come check us out and tell us what you think. And our links are all down in the description below. And we are also slowly being able to put our stuff on Anchor. So if people want to listen to us as podcasts, we do exist out there. We're not as good at maintaining it. We will put that out there right now too. But some of them are out there, and feel free to check them out if you'd like. But Absolutely. Until then, I'm Stu. And I'm Kyle. And we'll see, see you, you next, next time at the, the Card Pool. Pool. So can you believe I didn't like hate any of your picks this time? Yeah, I'm waiting for you to take your mask off. Like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. you thought it was Kyle. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah.